All righty. All right. So before I get into my analysis of the layout, I'm proud to announce finally um, my Amusement Insiders giveaway. So I will be giving away one 2025 Gold Pass with all season food and drink and all season fast lane. Um, so I'll be giving it away to one lucky winner um, in a series of challenges that a bunch of people can win. Um, and they win draws, like entries into a draw that uh, bots will be running. And then at the end, uh, a bot will pick out of all those entries someone to win this gold pass. So it's a really big giveaway. It is not associated with Canada's Wonderland at all. It is strictly coming out of Amusement Insiders. So part of the first challenge is I'm going to get you guys to go on over to our Discord server, which I'll link in the comments down below, and I'll pin that comment. So just click that link or that invite link and join Discord. Um, once you're in there, we can teach you how to use it. It is essentially a giant forum um, with the uh, option to join voice chat as well. And in general chat, there'll be general chat. There'll be a pinned little thing um, for you to click enter, and a bot will select 50 winners. Um, from that challenge, that'll be entered to win um, in the final draw. So there'll be a lot of challenges. I suggest you watch all of my content over uh, the next two weeks. I'll be announcing on August 8th. Um, and yeah, so if Wonderland keeps true to previous years, this pass will work this year as well. So you could have all season fast lane for the remainder of 2024 and 2025. Fingers crossed. All right, so let's get into my analysis. I am shocked at how many people have watched um, this layout um, and this coaster in such a short period of time. I wasn't expecting that. I was expecting like 4,000, 6,000 views right away. Um, but the fact that it's almost at 12,000 views already is mind blowing. So thank you so much. Um, but yeah, so let's go over some of the ride stats for you very quickly. Um, it has a max height of 249 feet, track length of 4,835 feet, a top speed of 137 kilometers an hour. Uh, the drop is 230 feet. Top hat drop angle is 82 degrees. Inversions four. Uh, duration 64 seconds from boost launch to final breaks. Um, max vertical forces is 5 Gs. Minimum vertical forces is negative 1 Gs. Uh, this model specifically runs four trains. Um, with a dual uh, loading station and it dispatches two trains at the same time. Theoretical capacity of 1,440 riders per hour. So um, I do want to touch on one thing for you guys. Uh, so the model you see before you, it's not something that can be whipped up in a short amount of time. This is something I had to approach scape designs with about a month and a half ago, two months ago, I approached them with the idea. We needed more information. We needed more markings before we could do it. When they started marking up around the vortex drop area um, and the coming out of tunnel one, there were a few markings and the pizza pizza and then the station and turn and the hole into the mountain. We were able to kind of move forward with a general concept. So this concept before you is a month old on information so I want to do I do want to express that so a lot of people are like oh if even a little bit of this is accurate um, I'm gonna be blown away well there is some accuracy to this there is a huge um, discrepancy in recent information so there is definitely things missing that have popped up um, obviously it can come down to even the theme doesn't align with Wonder Wonderland's uh, moving forward with and trust me you're gonna want to watch tomorrow's video I have some new ideas about how this ride is going to work and how it might actually be a medieval fair themed roller coaster. Um, so we'll go over that. We'll go over my idea and why I think that. Um, and it, it truthfully has nothing to do with teasers, although the teasers have slightly helped confirm that. It's a little another kind of speculative rumor that uh, I'm going to go over in terms of that. but. Uh, in terms of information, I want to go over why we designed it the way we did. Because a lot of people are probably like, did you just come up with this out of thin air? No, actually, we didn't. Um, but basically what happens is I have a map. You guys have seen the map of the footing layout, the footing marking numbers, everything. What I did is Escape Designs wanted as much detailed information as I could possibly give them, knowing that there was a lot of gray area. 
So I created that re de uh, really detailed footing map. Um, we had a lot of voice calls. I submitted it to them and they came up with this concept. The concept was designed with other information as well. So for example, if you guys remember a video, I don't remember the timeline perfectly, but about a month ago they did soil samples with a soil sample machine. Well, this soil sample machine moved along the course of the coaster, um, which also helped figure out the path. And it drilled some soil samples and it took about a day to do three fourths of the coaster's layout. When it got to Extreme Skyflyer's pot of land, it spent roughly two full days in that one spot testing multiple samples from the exact same location at really, really deep down compared to the rest of the ride. So I'm gonna take that old information. So, and that, that information right there is why we were assuming and are still assuming that there's gonna be some sort of grand element in Extreme Sky Flyers Pot of Land. Typically, soil samples are important, especially in loose soil areas or marshy land, wetland, and that specific plot of land is not actually marsh land or super wet or anything. So that information was important because that does signify that there is going to be some sort of grand element there. It makes sense why they removed a ride like Extreme Sky Flyer, something important to Canada's Wonderland skyline, and they're going to replace it with some sort of grand element. With that information, um, that is what led to the elemental design on this coaster. We took what Premier is known for. So Premier is one of the pioneers of like, you know, launch coasters out there. Uh, they are known for their vertical loops, their world's tallest vertical loop that they had before the record was stolen. Um, and their swing launch. So if you remember even Full Throttle, it has the swing launch. They are also known for their spikes. I, I Correct me if I'm wrong, but they were the pioneer of the spike well before it was used by other manufacturers, especially if you look at uh, Mr. Freeze and all those, and the inverted top hat. So I took the inverted top hat design and I asked Escape Designs if they could put a little spin on it um, in the Extreme Sky Flyer Pot of Land. I feel like Wonderland, that's one of the easiest records Wonderland could go for, world's tallest inversion, um, and that would be the perfect place to do that. It's either going to come with world's tallest inversion in the Extreme Sky Flyer Pot of Land or coming out of the mountain. That's just my speculative guess, um, but yeah. But again, just to remind you guys... Um, this design was not whipped up from blueprints, like some might think. Uh, if it was, I'd probably be in a really bad place with Canada's Wonderland right now. Um, so that I can confirm you guys. If you guys are looking at this like, oh, this is like the Yukon era. It's designed from the blueprints. Um, it is not. Uh, and it is a month old of information. So while the footing layout is very similar, there is 100% some change in evidence um, and uh, interestingly enough, this is looking like a really interesting project. I want to go over some tea with you guys. So some newer information, which we kind of knew some of it uh, a couple weeks ago, is this project, it's no joke that it is extreme importance to Canada's Wonderland. Um, I have never seen Canada's Wonderland so protective of information and so protective of what this project could be. Um, anyone who knows Canada's Wonderland, and trust me, I know Canada's Wonderland really well, um, they have been, and I know I'm allowed to talk about this um, in a little detail, obviously I can't go in full detail, but Wonderland has obviously expressed that they do not want any information leaking out about this coaster. Um, and from what I've gathered, track shipments could be arriving after the announcement um, and that was done on purpose. So they wanted no track or supports to arrive for the coaster before the announcement. Um, and I'm also starting to feel like there's a reason the construction crew working on the coaster has been so minimal. Um, a lot of people have been bringing up like, oh, you know, it's weird that it's such a small team, a team of six. Um, and that they've only been doing the station and turn into the mountain um, and break run for the coaster and not working in the larger areas. Well, I can confirm that the larger areas of this coaster layout are probably gonna need a larger drill. Um, so we are waiting on that. 
uh, most likely, speculatively. And on top of that, the larger team hasn't come in to work on this coaster because they don't want much known about this coaster to the public until after the announcement. Um, the date of the announcement is set for the exact same date as the stockholders call um, for the new Six Flags company. So that's really interesting as well. August 8th will be the stockholders call for Six Flags slash Cedar Fair. And it will also be Canada's Wonderland's announcement. It will also be the day that season passes most likely go on sale for Canada's Wonderland. But all this information, it, it's, it, it adds up. This really, from what I've heard, um, and from my personal opinion of how well I know Canada's Wonderland and my personal relationship with Canada's Wonderland is, I, I, and again, I'm really not trying to overhype you guys. I know during the Yukon Striker era, I did a really good job of setting the expectation really high. And I know that I am inherently doing that again, especially with this prediction layout that you see before you on the screen. But I do want to stress to you guys, as someone who's taken a long time um, and covered Wonderland for such a long time now, I'm on seven years now, I can tell you that this is going to be Canada's Wonderland's most unique, at minimum, um, project that we'll probably ever see. And I'm starting to feel like even the prediction layout you see before you, while some elements are out of this world and we probably won't see those, there is probably some more intensity to this coaster than what you're seeing before you even on the screen. Um, there are certain aspects uh, about this and the teasing campaign that have led people to think one thing or another. Um, and I'm going to release a video on the teasing campaign in entirety um, either tonight or tomorrow as well. It's going to be a two video day today or tomorrow. Um, as well as construction updates. It's crazy. There's a lot to talk about. And you guys are going to want to hear this because it's, it's, it's really heating up and my thoughts are all over the place. Uh, and you're going to see that. I think your mind's going to be blown with what I'm starting to think about this coaster. But again, I'm not trying to overhype you. And there is a chance that I could be leading you astray um, to be overhyped. So I just want to let you guys know that because a lot of people in the comments section are always like, oh, you misled your audience. Oh, you said this, you said that. Um, and those that watch my podcast and all that, I, I've been very, very blamed and very um, open about what to take with a grain of salt and what to trust and what not to trust. Um, and I'm telling you guys right now and I'm warning you guys right now that they're, in watching my updates and all that, there is obviously the possibility that I am overhyping you all. But I do, again, am just stressing that I am starting to feel... Um, like we have no idea what this project is really going to be like and that we could be looking at an even larger scale ride than what you see before you. Um, and I'll go into a little more detail about the symbols and what I think they definitely mean um, in my teaser analysis video. And it's all going to make sense to you as why this could be a much bigger project. Um, but um, if it is dueling, if it does end up being a dueling coaster, that does eliminate that ability for this to be that record setter that I'm starting to feel like it could potentially be. So if it does end up being a dual launched coaster, not two, but like two side by side coasters, which I have not fully seen evidence of, um, we have not seen the footings. The only footing pair that possibly hints at it is the groups of 157 A, B, and C and 157 A, B, and C. Um, slightly spread apart, but we have not seen greater evidence of that. The 157 in a pair of two could be that exact element that you see before you um, on the screen where it's doing that zero G stall over the path. So again, we haven't seen great evidence of that outside of the teasing campaign. Trust me, I know the teasing campaign is 100% suggesting a dual coaster with two, the hint at two, the pairs, the emphasis on the pairs, um, but I think there's a greater uh, message to that in terms of the storyline. So we'll have to wait and see, but definitely stay tuned. Um, but yeah. So essentially, what I'm trying to convey to you is the coaster you see before you, uh, definitely in terms of path of coaster, it is pretty accurate. Um, there are a couple things that obviously I personally disagree with. Um, 
I, I definitely think there will be more block zones on this coaster. Uh, it's a park like Canada's Wonderland with a rapid growing uh, attendance numbers, especially this season. So they're going to need capacity, and Premier isn't known for capacity. So we're going to see something change about Premier at this specific park with this specific coaster that enhances that, whether it's dual load with longer trains um, or the dual coaster, which I personally am not fully on board with. Um, there is going to be something that increases that capacity number. Um, but again, this is an early model from about a month ago. So stay tuned because I am updating um, what I possibly know based off of what I'm seeing on the construction site. And I have a lot to say. So the next two to three days worth of videos is going to be great. You're going to want to stay tuned for that. Don't forget to click the link down below in the comments section to join our Discord server, server to enter the giveaway. Um, and yeah, uh, thanks so much. If you guys have any further questions, cause I feel like maybe I didn't answer it in entirety in this video, comment down below and I'll try to actually respond to some comments in this video. I know I haven't been the best at responding to comments lately. I've been really, really busy, um, with this project that was, uh, uh, releasing the other day and the giveaway construction updates and obviously work, but yeah, thanks so much guys. Have a good one. Bye.